I'm Batman. Well, then everyone loses their minds. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So, um, as you could tell in the last video, Florida Man Talks Brute Force, I did happen to get rid of the 400EX and I did buy a Brute Force. To say it's perfect, I'd be lying. So I've done swapped up the actuator here on the clutch box, on the belt box here. Uh, just got done replacing the speed sensor. That, that seemed to fix the mile an hour thing. But I still haven't quite figured this out. Maybe I'll have to take that off and play with it. I don't know if that's normal. I'm telling maybe I need to get inside there and clean something because it's not right. But uh, it's funny, it's doing the same thing. Well, that's the same one with that one. That's the one I just took off of it and replaced. That and that was known to work, so I, I don't know what's going on. But overall, the foiler is, uh, it is great for what it is. I took it on a pretty long ride there when we went on the last video. It was pretty fun. It does like drinking gas, but uh, I'll show you what it does have. It did come with this light bar, which is super bright. I like it. Uh, it's got these 27 inch Mudcat tires. It does have the Brute Force 750 plastics on it, which is, it's a 650. The guy had another four wheeler there that was bad, the engine was gone, so he swapped plastics and all that stuff, put all the good parts over onto this one right before he sold it. So yeah, I've been in here tinkering, uh, getting ready to run this brake cable to the back because it broke. Uh, it did come with a back seat. I did have the same back seat on a 16500 Foreman. I sold my buddy, so that was good to get another one back just like because I know this is a good seat. I uh, got a seat cover in the mail. I just replaced the seal that was on the air box here. It's still got some spitting and sputtering coming from the carburetor, so I'm going to have to probably pull those, clean those, or uh, find a way that I can get them adjusted to each other because it backfires a lot. Uh, I'll show you. But it is really fun. It's really, it's a really big quad too. It's a powerhouse for a quad. Uh, top speed, uh, not so much. Maybe get it lined out right, get the carburetors adjusted. But I mean, for as torque wise, it is a torque monster. I like this thing. So you might see it on the channel some more. I don't know. I may try to trade around and get another uh, Honda. I gonna need a, I don't know, like a 500 Foreman or 420 Rancher, something. I don't know, but if you do, um, this thing will be on there and it will be uh, probably for a lot of mud because it's got the tires already. It's got pretty much everything, you know, full drive, whatnot. So it's, it, 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 it could be ready. Uh, I say she can go deep if, if, if not, then I guess it's just gonna be pulled home. That's just the way it is. I mean, it's just, just your average on a $3,500 quad off marketplace. So. I forgot to add the brute force uh the guy that i got it off of did show me a uh, receipt parts list and everything with the old parts so it does have a brand new time and chain well time and chains because there's three of them in this one uh brand new valves uh brand new top end rebuild so it's it's pretty fresh the guy did have it uh, left in his garage setting i don't know three months he said before i bought it and um uh, I think that might be the issue we're having with the carburetor. So it probably just needs, a, needs some cleaning done. But like I said, I will trade for a Honda.